हेलो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अदर सेशन ऑफ रेमबो सिक्योर सिंपोजियम 2021 सो टुडे वी हैव आवर ऑनरेबल गेस्ट गौरव शर्मा विथ अस एंड आल्सो शशि मैम आई लाइक यू टू गिव अस टुडेस एजेंडा सो वी कैन नो व्हाट वी आर डूइंग टुडे थैंक यू welcome to the day 4 of rainbow secure cyber symposium today we have three guest talks first we'll start with dr gaurav sharma who will be talking about privacy issues in blockchain then we will be having a guest uh, talk by double shock he'll be talking about artificial intelligence for cyber security and then we have a student guest talk by priya agrawal she'll be talking about upcoming trends in ui and ux so i would request eva to please introduce our guest speaker of the day dr gaurav sharma eva eva you can start आप आप इंट्रोड्यूस कर दीजिए। आई थिंक इज हैविंग सम प्रॉब्लम विद हर इंटरनेट कनेक्शन लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर गौरव शर्मा फॉर टुडे डॉक्टर गौरव शर्मा इज करेंटली वर्किंग एज अ पोस्ट डॉक सीनियर रिसर्चर एज यूनिवर्सिटी लिबरी दी ब्रक्सल्स बेल्जियम ही रिसीव्ड हिज पीएचडी एंड एमए डिग्री इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम थापर यूनिवर्सिटी इंडिया हिज करंट रिसर्च एड्रेसेस प्रीवियसली इश्यूज इन ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजीज His research interests also cover security threats in ad hoc networks. Dr. Sharma is a senior member of IEEE, and he has authored, co-authored more than 50 journal conferences, articles, and book chapters. I would request Dr. Gaurav Sharma to please start guest talk for today. Thank you. And the first question is: Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Thank you. so thank you uh, all the organizers for for inviting me for this session and uh, most importantly thank you uh, for conducting these sessions because i feel these sessions are uh, very fruitful for anyone who is working in the field of security and uh, especially uh, if you are a beginner in the in this field you can definitely take this the uh, benefit of this uh, this sessions now i will share my slides and just can you see okay thank you so the title of the talk is privacy issues in blockchain and uh, the agenda will be uh, the introduction to to blockchain and smart contract then i will talk a little bit about what is privacy and then we will talk about uh, privacy in blockchain so yesterday i attended the the last talk by anshika and uh, it was security in blockchain system and uh, she very well introduced the the blockchain what is blockchain and some some security um, some uh, huge case it where where there were security threats so blockchain is a chain of blocks uh, containing time stamped information and uh, the most important part here is Uh, there is no need of a trusted third party so whatever you name a big organization whether it is facebook google or or any other uh, microsoft we don't need any of these organizations and we can still manage in a decentralized peer to peer manner and trying to uh, design applications based on this new architecture and uh, the main idea here is uh, the the information that we are trying to possess here is in the form of transactions 
and these transactions are accumulated in the form of a block and then these blocks are uh, connected in the form of a chain and uh, to make sure that there is no one who can uh, there is no one can change change any transaction or any information in these blocks uh, we make sure we make sure with the help of cryptographic hash and this cryptographic hash is something like uh, uh, the hash of the previous block is uh, kept in the next blocks and so on so if you plan to make uh, changes in, in any of the previous blocks then you have to change all the subsequent blocks until today and that's uh, difficult of course that's i would not say that's impossible because um, in some situations in some conditions if you have a, a majority of stakes in the system like 51 percent of the the computational power then you can do that but uh, in most of the famous blockchains like bitcoin ethereum where we we talk about this uh, th this is uh, not possible today so if you uh, if you compare it with the distributed ledger system because it in, in the first glance it seems like that we have a, a distributed and replica of all the data that we uh, have on the blockchain so the main difference here is we don't allow two operations. One is the, the delete operation and other one is the update operation. So you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot make any modifications. You cannot delete any of the previous record which is already entered in the blockchain. Additionally, uh, since the inception of uh, Ethereum, uh, there is a concept of smart contract, which I will talk later. Uh, which is additional to the distributed ledger system, uh, which is new to, to the blockchain. And uh, in summary, I can say this is a append-only blo blockchain, distributed and uh, replicated, and making sure that any of the data you, you cannot modify. So this is the basic uh, architecture of, of uh, any blockchain system. And uh, if you see, there are two types of models here. Uh, one is permissionless and another one is permissioned model. In the case of permissionless, anyone can join the network. So you are allowed to uh, submit the transactions, see others transactions, have a copy of all the ledger. Uh, you can you can analyze whenever you want. And uh, uh, so this is like uh, an open book to everyone. So so anyone can see anything. In the case of Permissioned blockchain, this is the idea because most of the organizations or companies who want to adapt blockchain as their, uh, as their um, you know, innovative systems, uh, they don't want to share the uh, crucial information, the, the banking information or, or any other, uh, in, you know, uh, important information with, with everyone else. So they came up with a new system, which is permission system where you have to to take permission from some authority to participate in the, the blockchain. So these two, two types of systems are uh, very well known in the, in the blockchain. And if you see uh, these two types of systems and on, on a parallel, edge, parallel hand, you see uh, there are two types of uh, models which are, which are world state models. And these models are UTXO model and account based model. So in UTXO, it is like a, a wallet that we, we have in our pocket. Uh, we have uh, some different currencies in our in our wallet. And when we plan to buy something, we, we give some of these currencies, some of these notes to, to someone else. So what happens basically, we, we gave him some notes. We uh, the, the person who is uh, taking these notes, he will calculate whatever we are buying and give us the, the return change uh, that we are liable to get so what happens basically uh, you are spending something which is unspent in in my in my wallet and uh, whatever i am getting it is again unspent so the the most famous blockchain that we uh, that we have is, is bitcoin and bitcoin is based on utxo model so it is uh, unspent transactions that we have in our pocket and the network has to make sure that which coins are already spent or which are uh, unspent. So we have to make sure that uh, there is no coin which is 
two times spent. So double spend is a uh, common problem that we try to address whenever we try to design a blockchain. Another model is account model. It's, it's uh, because in the in the previous model we have to to make sure which coins are spent, which coins are unspent. So in the account based model we have a another scenario which is like a bank account. In our bank account we see a consolidated balance and from this balance we spent. So this type of model is adapted by Ethereum. So Bitcoin was the first blockchain by Satoshi Nakamoto and uh, then Ethereum was the next famous one uh, with, the, with some additional capabilities, which is smart contract. So the model was different and the main cryptographic techniques that we use here in blockchain are hash functions, digital signatures and Merkle tree. So a hash function is uh, a function which takes like arbitrary uh, arbitrary sequence of input and uh, it can output a fixed size of output. So this is definitely beneficial because uh, we don't know the size of the transaction and when we have to to uh, make sure that no one changes the transactions, we, we do the hash and it makes sure that the integrity of the transaction is maintained. No one ever changes the transactions because if you change the transaction, that means you change the hash. Then we have the digital signature. Digital signature is something like uh, a signature scheme where you take the input, the message and the private key of the signer and you output a signature. For the verification, you take the signature and the public key of the signer and you, you say whether it is verified or not verified. So whenever you submit a transaction in a blockchain, every time you have to submit a digital signature with it. And then we have a Merkle tree. So Merkle tree is uh, something like this. We have all the transactions as the leaf where we say uh, data blocks. And these transactions are being hashed all together up to the point where we reach to a single node. And this single node is the root hash. And along with this root hash and all the transactions, we, we uh, create a block where we say like 100 or 1000 transactions in a block. And then we uh, we keep this hash of this whole block into the, the next block to maintain the, the immutability. So this is the basic blockchain structure. And to make sure that uh, no one cheats because someone can come up with like thousands of identities and can say, okay, I have a good share in the, in the network and I can make decisions. So to avoid this kind of situation, this is uh, like when someone comes up with multiple identities in crypto, we say it civil attack. And uh, to avoid this kind of civil attack, uh, the, the idea from Nakamoto was uh, to to ask for some work. And this work is known as proof of work in their in their first model. And uh, everyone has to, to do a lot of computations. And finally, whoever wins will be the, the one who will add the block in the system. And there are multiple uh, consensus algorithms adopted in different blockchains, proof of work, proof of stake, uh, practical Byzantine fault tolerance, and many more. Proof of stake is also one of the important one because uh, it doesn't consume that much of uh, resources that in comparison with the, with the proof of work. And Ethereum recently, uh, you know, finalized uh, almost in the in the final stage, they are launching Ethereum 2.0 with the the changed consensus, and they claim like we will save 99.9 percent .9 energy uh, with the change of proof of work to proof of stake. So the question is when to use a blockchain because nowadays this is the, the trend like every company, every organization has a, a keyword like blockchain in their system. So actually there, there is not a single bullet to, to answer this question. And uh, the easiest answer is it depends upon the application and you have to analyze it properly whether you really need a blockchain or not. In some situations, uh, like in payment systems, notarizations, public proofs, value holdings, blockchain had some good use cases. 
and uh, there are some use cases which are in production so we can say yes it is adopted adopted very well but in some uh, use cases like when you are sharing big data and uh, some privacy issues we address blockchain is not a very good choice uh, if you don't make significant modifications in the in the underlying system then we we will go to uh, cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency is something which is uh, very much uh, many people think the same thing as blockchain because everyone uh, saw the same research paper which claimed a uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency the same idea altogether so many people have the uh, the same feeling so actually uh, cryptocurrency is a successful application of blockchain and the examples are bitcoin monero cardano and uh, polka dots so there are like more than 4 to 5000 uh, uh, cryptocurrencies nowadays and uh, the basic architecture that we talk here in the previous slides like the the hash of the previous block will go to the next block and and so on everything will go in the in the cryptocurrency but additionally we have a native currency to support the the transaction fee and and so on so we have bitcoin we have ethereum we have hyperledger fabric so we have hundreds of thousands of uh, cryptocurrencies these days one important uh, concept here is smart contract which was introduced by ethereum so what ethereum came up with uh, like in in bitcoin systems there were some some ideas to write scripts but the idea uh, to write these scripts was not turing complete so ethereum came up with the idea to have a language which can write all the logic that you can think of so uh, they came up with a new language which is named as solidity and with solidity uh, which is a turing complete language you can write your business logic in the form of a, a smart contract in some different uh, blockchains the the keyword the smart contract may be different for example in hyperledger fabric uh, they call it chain code but ultimately the the logic is more or less same and uh, if you see a smart contract with the help of one example uh, let's say there is an insurance company which insures the customers uh, on the condition that if you are if your flight is delayed by more than two hours we will pay you some amount of money and this kind of insurance uh, can be written in a smart contract and what a smart contract will do here smart contract will take uh, the inputs from the the flight uh, flight communications and uh, they can make sure whether the flight is on time or or delayed by 2 hour if that's the case the in the customers who are insured with this insurance company they will get the reimbursements immediately so on the company end you know you need not to do anything but smart contract is a very crucial uh, um, you know component of the the system once it is deployed you cannot change it and there are a few examples where the contract had some bug and you lose like millions of uh, euros so be very very careful when you design smart contract so if we go to to privacy privacy is a little bit uh, contradictory with with transparency because here in blockchain the most important idea that we see here is the, the transparency and uh, all the data is visible to everyone and so on so what we want here if you want to store something confidential you cannot do it whenever you want to interact with the smart contract interaction with the smart contract is through transactions and since transactions are public that means you cannot uh, you cannot hide anything another important use case here is uh, recently the european union uh, came up with this gdpr uh, this uh, global data general data protection regulation and with this new uh, uh, regulations the condition uh, the the important aspect here is we want the customers to be forgotten like 
when, when I submit an application to a company and I'm not shortlisted for this, this particular company, the company has to forget me. So this is something uh, when you plan to put something on the blockchain, that means it is there for forever. But if you talk about GDPR, that means once the task is done, you have to forget me. That means the, the main control in, is in the user's hand. And uh, this seems to be incompatible with, with GDPR. So, so privacy is an important aspect here. In the blockchain uh, context, what we want in uh, from the privacy perspective, we want the confidentiality of the transaction, like what amount I have in my wallet. I don't want to I don't want to uh, uh, give access to anyone. What amount I am transacting, this should be hidden, and the anonymity of the sender and the recipient. So we have to make sure who is transacting to whom. This should be hidden. And without anonymity, uh, there is no privacy. So if we go to uh, what exactly the Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whether they are anonymous or not, actually there is a myth that cryptocurrencies are anonymous, but actually they are pseudonymous. So when we say pseudonymity, that means you come up with some uh, new identity. And uh, this may, may or may not be related to your original identity, like your real identity. But what you try to do uh, to, to make yourself anonymous, you have this new identity and you try to produce it uh, a new identity every time. So you want to make it unlinkable. So unlinkability means uh, when you are interacting with some system multiple times, the system is unable to, to say, whether this is the same user or it's a new user. So if we say anonymity, then we need two things. You have to come up with new identity all the times and uh, you have to make sure that your uh, your pseudonymity doesn't connect to the uh, to your real identity. But actually this, this doesn't happen. In pseudonymity, uh, if you try to produce new public private key pairs all the time and everything seems good, but uh, when you try to exchange your Bitcoins with Ethereum, you will go to some crypto exchange that crypto exchange may ask for your real identity. So you will lose your identity or you will, you, or I can say you can connect your identity to your uh, pseudonyms. There are some uh, social traffic analysis um, uh, where like your Facebook data or Twitter data had some real identity of yourself. And when you are making the crypto transactions, cryptocurrency transactions with the same browser, you are disclosing your identity uh, or you are connecting your pseudonym with your real identity. There are some especially there are some companies who are doing the same business and uh, this is de-anonymizing Bitcoin transactions and the company chain analysis and there are many more. So it's not very easy to uh, hide your real identity with when you are talking about uh, making transactions with cryptocurrencies and so on. And if finally you, you have anonymity, there are some uh, problems with Full anonymity as well. So we see uh, money laundering, child pornography, uh, cyber stalking, fraud and phishing, spamming, intellectual property violations, and many more. So anonymity is uh, okay on, on one aspect, it seems to be a solution, but on the other aspect, government wants a, a, a better control of the things. So this is a bit contradictory. So what exactly we want from uh, the blockchain perspective, we want the identity privacy, like the, the pseudonym and real identity disconnection. We want the uh, transactions are unlinkable to each other. The content of the transaction is only known to the, the participants. And we want the off-chain identity of yours uh, should, be, uh, should not be connected to, to whatever you are using during the transactions. So how you can hide your uh, off-chain identity? Uh, one way is you can become a full node. And uh, full nodes in a uh, blockchain systems are like uh, who are receiving others' transactions, relaying it to other, other nodes, and so on. 
So what you can do, you can receive like 99 transactions from others, add one of yours and forward like 100 transactions to the network. No one uh, probably will notice it. So this can be one naive way to, to produce yourself uh, like I didn't do anything. Another way is uh, use VPN, but in this case, there are some, uh, you know, pros and cons. The VPN services that you are getting from some uh, service provider, they may ask for your real identity. And in, again, in that case, uh, you may connect your real identity with the pseudonyms. Another important uh, aspect here is uh, using Tor and I, uh, I2P. So these are some foolproof solutions, although this is not, uh, I cannot say this is impossible to track you down, but okay, these are better than VPNs. And uh, in your browser, the cookies, uh, they also form a fingerprint of yourself. So you have to make sure that um, you are not trackable easily. So uh, the easiest solution, let's go for that. And that is, uh, let's encrypt the data. So whatever, whatever you are transacting, uh, put it in a AES or any other uh, encryption system and forward it when it is encrypted. So that is again a problem. And the problem is in most of the blockchains these days, we talk about smart contract because this is the business logic of the system. And smart contract is the business logic and it cannot process the, the encrypted data because uh, all the full nodes in the system, they are running these smart contracts and they have full transparency, uh, like the full node can see what's going on in the smart contract. So everyone has access to this. So this solution of encryption is not going to work. And now we will see uh, what blockchain platforms or cryptocurrency platforms are doing to make sure that there is some sort of privacy that we can offer to the users and they can attract more and more users to to say that uh, okay if you want to exchange some uh, illegal content okay we are here to offer you one uh, option which will hide your identity which will hide the identity of the receiver which will hide whatever you are transacting so there there is a possibility so there are solutions which are trying to provide full anonymity. There are, are solutions which are trying to provide conditional anonymity. It depends upon what blockchain platform or cryptocurrency we are talking about. So in, uh, in this uh, cryptocurrency or blockchain domain, we have, as, as I mentioned, we have two types of uh, uh, models. One is permissionless, another one is permissioned. So from the privacy perspective, we have uh, in permissionless, we have Monero, Gcash, and Dash, the most uh, famous ones. On the permissioned environment, we have Hyperledger Fabric, Coda, and Quorum. Although there are many more uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchain systems which are trying to provide privacy of some sort, but these are the, the ones which are having significant research behind it. So, uh, in the coming slides, I will particularly talk about Hyperledger Fabric, how they are providing privacy to their system. And then uh, if the time allows, I will talk about uh, briefly about permissionless blockchain. So in Hyperledger Fabric, we have a uh, few entities or a uh, few participants. One is the transaction participants, uh, whether they can be reader, writer, or the administrator. We have a certificate authority. Uh, this is this global certificate authority, which is providing certificates to all the organizations. Then we have a membership service provider. This is the, the entity who is providing certificates to the users, to the end users, whether it is a reader, writer, or administrator. And then we have endorsers who are in the uh, peer network. They are going to validate your transactions then there must be someone who is collecting these transactions and put it in a block. So there are ordering services for that. And finally, we have auditor who can audit the transactions. So this is the, the architecture of Hyperledger Fabric. We have endorsers, we have orderers, and the user, uh, it can be like a reader, writer, or administrator. They will use their client application. They will submit the transaction, sign this transaction, send it to the, to the endorser. 
endorser will validate it and uh, then it will go to the orderer order will put it in the block and forward it to the other peers and then finally it will, it will be included in the the blockchain so what privacy issues we are uh, tackling here we have transactional data privacy state data privacy chain code privacy and user privacy so how we are trying to address it we have three different uh, solutions depending upon uh, the the granularity so if you say uh, the first solution is channels uh, channels is basically a uh, coarse grain access to the uh, to the chain code level and uh, if we uh, talk in detail about channels channels is, channels are basically participating the the whole network into some specific uh, you know sub components where there are some specific organizations want to interact for example uh, here in belgium there are uh, let's say 20 banks and they want to have a blockchain in common so what they can do they can all have hyperledger uh, fabric installed and they can create a channel uh, among them and then they can submit their transactions the communications that they are doing in the form of transactions and uh, it will go to the to the blockchain platform so this is one solution to to form a group of participants form a group of organizations where the the communication is constrained to these organizations any other organization who is not part of this channel they cannot see what uh, what is the current state of the ledger what transactions are they are uh, submitting to to each other and uh, for this, in most of the cases, we, we need some business logic, so they call it chain code. So administrator is the party who can initiate a chain code. And uh, in this case, the, the main cone here is uh, the endorsers and orderers, they, they can see all the data. So we need to, to come up with some new solutions which, uh, which can avoid that orderers cannot see the data or the endorsers cannot see the data because these endorsers or these orderers are some peer nodes in the network. And these nodes can be like uh, some uh, counterpart in your, uh, in your business model. So you may not want that the transactions should be visible to them. So what you can do, you have another solutions that is private data collection. So what we can do, we can submit the transactions and uh, maybe in the encrypted form or maybe uh, you know in a in a special database and we can share it with the with the transaction and this this special data is known as transient data and uh, the chain code use this transient key and store the encrypted data on the peer give it to the to the endorser and endorser will make sure that it doesn't go to the order so what the endorser will do, endorser will check, okay, all the data is, is perfect. And uh, with whom you want to share, you have to mention it in the transactions. And then uh, you have to mention it in the chain code. And then uh, the endorser will receive this, uh, this secret data and share it with the only participants who are mentioned in your chain code. So the hash of the data will be uh, will go to the blockchain. So the peers who received the data, they can verify whether the, the transaction is valid or not. So in this case, the orderer of these transactions cannot see the data. So we have one more higher level of privacy. Uh, in the previous case, in the case of channels, uh, the orderers and, and endorsers, like this, this, these are peer organizations. I don't want them to, to see my data. So in the case of channels, they can see this. But here in the case of private data collection, only the endorsers can see it. So is this solution sufficient? Actually, no, because we don't want the endorsers to, to see it. So the next solution came up with, uh, the, the it is named as IDE mix, which is named, named as identity mixer. And uh, whenever you are submitting your transactions, signing it with, the, with some uh, digital signature, uh, for example, in the case of Bitcoin, we use ECDSA 
and there are some uh, blockchains which use Snore signature. So with these signatures, whenever you want to, to submit these transactions, you have to, to present a certificate like the X509 certificate to claim that, okay, I am this, this party. Uh, so what happens here uh, when you can declare, when you declare that uh, who are you, then there is no point of user privacy. So what this solution came up with uh, from the, the certificate that you are receiving from your uh, membership service provider, you will convert it into a new certificate, which is known as one-time transaction certificate. And this certificate will make sure that you are a valid participant in the system. You can submit, the, you are allowed to submit this transaction, but the, the endorser will, will not know who exactly who exactly you are. For example, in one particular organization, there might be four or um, four managers or 10 team leaders. And let's say uh, the team leader wants to submit a transaction. So the transaction, when the endorser will receive, the endorser will see, okay, this transaction is signed by one of the team leader, but they they don't know who, uh, who is uh, this transaction submitter. So they are, always one by 10 probability for them. So this is the, this is the, the latest solution presented by Hyperledger Fabric. So these three type of uh, privacy solutions basically provide you uh, different granular, granularity of uh, solutions. And uh, then you can choose which one uh, you want because they have different uh, efficiency issues because they are cryptographic solutions. And so IDMix uh, seems to be the, the most uh, advanced one, but still there are issues like uh, all the credentials are issued by the same central entity. So this is still uh, not addressed in the, in the fabric. And uh, currently we are, we are working on that. So this is the scenario when we talk about one particular blockchain uh, platform, which is Hyperledger Fabric. And Hyperledger is basically um, uh, a project initiated by Linux Foundation and mostly uh, contributed by IBM. And uh, there are also more than 100 companies who are participating in this uh, development. And Fabric is one of the, uh, one of the, you know, uh, solution trying to provide this permissioned environment with these specific features. And uh, there are many more uh, other than Fabric, which people are working, Hyperledger Cactus and, and uh, many more. So this is one example, this was one example, uh, which uh, provide some sort of privacy at different levels. And uh, this was an example of permissioned blockchain. And uh, in the case of permissionless blockchain, we have uh, Monaro and we have Gcash and Dash. They, they came up with different solutions because these are open blockchains. They, they are allowing everyone to, to participate in the system. They are allowing everyone to mine, submit transactions and so on. So they, they need to come up with different solutions. So Monaro came up with the, with a different solution than where they say, okay, we use ring signatures for hiding the sender. To hide the receiver, we use one-time addressing. To hide the amount of the transaction, they have different uh, ring confidential transaction systems. And uh, to hide your real identity to your pseudonym, they have uh, this Covery, which is an I2P router. So if, if I summarize here, I can say uh, any of the solutions, whether it is Gcash, Monero, it can be. Uh, it can be a fork of Bitcoin, it can be a fork of Ethereum, it can be an open blockchain, uh, permission blockchain. You have to make sure what kind of cryptographic solutions are there, which can provide you some sort of anonymity. What level of anonymity uh, you are looking for? For example, ring signature can provide you uh, anonymity is like one by one by N, where N are the number of uh, participants you include in the ring signature. On the other hand, if you if you go for uh, Gcash, Gcash basically relies on zero knowledge proof system, which is a uh, uh, 
uh, cryptographic concept and where you try to prove someone that you have something but without disclosing it so these kind of different ideas uh, different blockchains came up with and they are providing some sort of uh, privacy so probably i will stop here because there are uh, many solutions in, in blockchain systems uh, where they, they try to provide uh, some sort of privacy with the different cryptographic concepts and uh, probably i will stop here and i will i will uh, i am open for questions wonderful gaurav it was a uh, uh, really you know very uh, thoughtful presentation actually the i like the way you organized uh, the you know right from explaining the you know what blockchain uh, you know architecture is consist of and you went and to delve into the uh, smart contracts you also touch base on the privacy aspects of it like you know especially i like that uh, how you presented uh, that hey which are the different use cases in which the blockchain can be used good versus bad and if something that is bothering you how you can improve the security how you can improve the privacy aspect of it so i think uh, uh, main features of the blockchain that uh, people are normally going forward is this uh, you know ledger capability it's uh, also the anonymity in some cases so i think uh, um this presentation is going to really helpful uh, to the audience who is uh, if they are new to the blockchain uh, terminology or if they are a seasoned technology professional but they want to learn and reach the knowledge about uh, blockchain and uh, data around the data privacy it's going to be helpful we have one more audience that uh, although we have uh, on our list but they could not attend today because of uh, their work commitments is the uh, cyber uh, risk management industry they are very much eager to learn about uh, this technology because when some startup uh, you know creates a solution based of the blockchain technology here they need to understand what are the risk they are covering for a given business so yeah. this is also the another type of audience uh, we have uh, that uh, who wants to really know from the liability perspective you know if i'm uh, writing a you know uh, cyber insurance for a given uh, startup or a business who is using blockchain what are uh, the possible risk what are the possible claims that may arise out of it so i think uh, all these aspects that you mentioned uh, is going to be very helpful and uh, we may also invite you to a dedicated workshop uh, sometime where more industry executives may want to learn or you know get enriched with you or collaborate with you so now uh, we'll be doing uh, some activities uh, uh, separately from the event but uh, we are very much thankful that you you know took so much time to prepare the presentation and you know you know deal with it yeah in spite of all the challenges you know you came here and supported us thank, thank you gaurav that was very nice but we have one question uh, yeah. is from eva she says like i have a confusion is cryptocurrency legal in india and how can we invest in it also it is safe <laughs> okay i will try to answer okay cryptocurrency is legal in india first of all uh, but the government is not liable for your losses so there is no regulation to consider when you go to to police station that i i lose this much of money they are not going to uh, write an fir for you because here the whole uh, game of the system is uh, relies on two uh, terms which is public key and private key public key is the address that you are giving to someone to to receive or transfer the money and private key is the one that is uh, that is the one who is giving you the access to this money so if you lose the private key that means your money is gone and no one is going to be responsible for this one and there are many examples where people lost millions of euros so so this is very crucial and there are some solutions there are some new wallets who are providing this kind of solutions like providing some threshold cryptography Uh, dividing your private key into multiple parts, and uh, you cannot rely on one one particular system. 
and uh, but still the most of the the crypto exchanges or wherever you are going to register uh, they will provide you one private key and they will ask you to keep it secure write it on the paper put it in the bank and and so on so so you have to be very careful when investing in the in the blockchain in the cryptocurrency market and uh, the next question was how you can uh, invest in it so the easiest way to invest in cryptocurrencies is uh, go to the crypto exchange uh, in india there are many uh, one of them is vajirex and uh, there are some uh, okay you can just google it so there are many crypto exchanges who provide cryptocurrencies and they will accept your uh, currency like uh, in in india especially they can accept inr so you can uh, pay with your debit card credit card or uh, your uh, upi wallets and you can buy the cryptocurrency so you can own the cryptocurrency just by paying the the inr and once you have the cryptocurrency you will have a private key you will have a address and you want to trade with it you want to sell it you want to buy it at uh, you want to sell it at some some later point of time you can definitely do that so you can just go to this same platform where your cryptocurrency is and you can just click on the trade and you can sell it so very very easy but again uh, just want to uh, you know just make sure that these cryptocurrencies that people deal with like bitcoin ethereum and so on they are very very volatile in one night you can lose everything that you have so so please make sure whenever you are planning to to invest if you want more information you can ask for my email id or phone number i can give more details about it yeah sure 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 garo so it was really nice to uh... and uh, i think uh, um, one last question uh, developers would be more interested to know what platform or what development tools are available to use uh, the blockchain uh, technology into their uh, new uh, app development uh, say mm-hmm. if they want to have the benefits of you no know, so okay so uh, mostly if you want to develop some some application on the top of blockchain uh most of the people are interested in that so uh the solidity the go lang like the the go language and uh, javascript these are the main languages where uh, even java uh, some platforms supports java so you can write these contracts and uh, python is one of the most important because if you are dealing with crypto so you you may write uh, some cryptographic codes in in python so these are uh, some uh languages where you can develop the the codes in uh, in blockchain but whenever you choose a platform for example if you choose hyperledger fabric you you uh you have to make sure uh, like which particular language you are interested in and whether they support this this type of platform so if you go for hyperledger fabric i can say go is the the most famous one Mm-hmm. even you can write codes in other languages as well in the rust uh, and uh, i think in java but uh, the most famous one because the the main architecture is developed in in go mm-hmm. so it's better to to write in that mm-hmm. yeah i think thank you thank you for that um, gem of knowledge and i think uh, there are so many much valuable points throughout the presentation i think uh, yeah it's very good uh, and i encourage uh, our audience and students in the audience to summarize your learnings and also you know you can uh, you know um, post uh, on the social media and also tag us so that you know if uh, somebody needs uh, more uh, you know learning you can be reach out so definitely um, we'll invite you once again you uh, have been you know presented in a most simplistic way that people can understand so thank you very much gaurav again thank, thank you, you.